Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Crypto Tonight. Let's see what we have in store for today's episode. Yeah, yeah. Coronavirus, 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 corona beer, coronavirus, coronavirus. Well, that sums it all up. Looks like today we're talking about coronavirus again. Welcome everyone to Crypto Tonight, the world's most craziest crypto news program. My name is Darko, bringing you my unprofessional and irrelevant opinion this evening. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and retweet this episode and hit that notification bell so you stay up to date with further videos. So what's happening with everybody and what's happening in the world? The world has gone crazy. It's the zombie apocalypse. It's the Armageddon. Apparently, the rapture is coming. There's a lot of crazy shit going on in the world, but unfortunately, there hasn't been much going on in the crypto world. Yes, there has been news coming out daily, but nothing really newsworthy for me to report to you, which is why I've been a little, little, little bit quiet recently. So, what I've done today is I've taken down some notes, written down some point form notes, because there's a few different things I want to talk about today. Unfortunately, they're not really crypto based, but we'll get to that very shortly. First of all, I would like to discuss crypto YouTubers recently. Now, even they have been running out of valuable crypto news to report. So they've been going a little bit slightly off topic, which is cool. A bit of variety is good. No problem with that. I've done it myself. But it's a sign that there's a huge lack of interest in crypto at the moment. And when news does come out, it's nothing really worth talking about. So today's going to be a bit more of a chill session. I want us to just kick back, relax, grab yourself a Corona beer and enjoy the show. Beer. Now that's how you hide your label. So I could have been coming out here daily or a couple of times in the last week and talked about various things such as crypto ups and crypto downs, Bitcoin about to move parabolic and Bitcoin about to crash again, golden death crosses and Fibonacci's onions and bald teacups and handles. I'm not going to do all that. I'm not going to get into all that bullshit because I like to keep it real. One thing I don't like, and if you've been watching this show for long enough, is predictions. I do not like predictions because unless you are an established psychic, no chart can give you a prediction. All charts can give you is past historical performance. So when it comes to TA, not my cup of tea Fibonacci. So what has Fire! So what's actually been going on in the crypto world? As I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, not too much. I'll give you guys an example. If I really wanted to report bullshit news, here's an example. Janet Jackson's husband or ex-husband is suing Facebook because some scammers used his image to promote a Facebook ad that was provo promoting a crypto scam. Whoopie doo! Wow, that's our crypto news. While well, the rest of the world is reporting 24 seven on the same shit, which is coronavirus, lockdowns, people getting sick and people dying. So, there's not too much worthy of reporting this week in the crypto sense anyway. Well, we have conspiracies and possibilities. Now, many people have started coming out with their conspiracies in regards to coronavirus. It's the Chinese government, it's an evil scientist, they're, they're targeted attacks, biological warfare. Sounds crazy, but they're possible. I'm not going to say it's bullshit because it is possible, but I'm not saying it's likely. Even though the coronavirus itself appears to be so far the perfect virus, really interesting. It's, it's just perfect, so to speak. And due to its perfections, 
it's also possible that this could be leading to distractions in the media, distractions from other world events. It's a huge opportunity for politicians of various countries to keep the media and the public eye focused on this human tragedy, the coronavirus, even though the death rates aren't as high as some of the previous viral epidemics, pandemics we've had in the past, it's still very young and too early to tell what the future holds. So do you guys think that the media are using this coronavirus, and the government of course, are using the coronavirus videos and news as a distraction from other real world events? Leave me a comment beneath this video. Next up lies about data. So there have been various governments around the world claiming that China or accusing China of disinformation, disinformation about their statistics with regard to coronavirus. Uh, what the fuck's that word? Uh, not contractions. Infections. Infections and misinforming the world about their death rates as well. Now for a population that is so big and so congested, I find it very, very, very difficult to believe their current numbers. Italy and the US on the other hand are getting absolutely pounded with this virus. Absolutely pounded. It's very sad and very scary to see and it's very unfortunate and the reason why it's very unfortunate and regrettable is because realistically this whole thing could have been prevented if some dirty bastard in Wuhan didn't swallow the infected bat shit of a bat that he ate in a wet market that he shouldn't have been at in the first place eating that animal but who listens? Stubborn. Anyway, I digest. So next up we have shopping centers, lockdowns. How have the lockdowns affected you guys? Please leave me a comment beneath this video. Do you have problems shopping? Do you have problems finding essentials and necessities? Do you have problems finding your wants, not just your needs? Please leave me a comment beneath this video on how the current lockdowns, if you've had lockdowns in your country or state, or city, how they've affected your daily life. Also, there has been a huge surge in porn activity. Now, what's going on there is the more people are staying home, the more they're getting bored, and the more the searches on porn sites have gone up. It's actually made it to the news. That's where I got me sources from. So apparently there's been a high escalation of porn site use, and some experts have even gone as far to say that the longer people stay at home, the more chances divorce rates are going to escalate as well. Next up, social distancing, famine and power. How have you guys adapted to the social distancing thing if it has started in your area already? In my area, if you go out public, you must stay at least 1.5 meters away from the surrounding person closest to you. It's, be, it's creating quite an awkward environment, especially in these shopping centers. Everybody is like so quiet and so alert. And if you speak, you break that silence and that feeling, that ominous feeling for a split moment goes away. And that reminder of what it feels like to be an actual human gets remembered for a split second, but then it quickly dissipates again. And people go along, plodding along in silence. The supermarkets have been very, very, very quiet. But quiet doesn't mean not busy. They've been packed. But it's just amazing to see so many people congregated in one place, but there's dead silence. It's very ominous, very ominous. Now, amongst the conspiracy theories, there have been a lot of uh, limits on how many products you can buy in various supermarkets around the world. This almost sounds and looks and feels like they're trying to get us used to famine. They're restricting us now, first from social distancing, secondly, from how much food you need to 
provide for yourself and for your family. They're telling you how much you're allowed to take. For example, let's say you're married with children and you have eight kids, but you're only allowed to get one liter of milk. Restriction, one liter of milk. How the hell is one liter of milk gonna be enough? But they don't care, they don't care. So this leads me to my next topic of power. How does a government take full control and get the full support of its people? Hmm? How? The answer is fear. When the people are in fear, they turn to the government for help and security. So we have social distancing. You're not allowed to be within 1.5 meters of anyone else in public. You have a shortage of food. You're limited to what you can buy for yourself and for your family. So now you're fearing losing human contact. You fear going hungry or your kids going hungry. What's next? Turn to the government for help. It all makes sense. But is this deliberate or purely a coincidence? I'm not trying to, what's that word? Encourage a conspiracy theory, but it's possible and not possible. What do you guys think? Do you think there's a bigger picture behind the real story? Please leave me a comment down beneath this video. Now on that note, we have classical conditioning. Are we being classically conditioned to be antisocial or socially distant? Are we being classically conditioned to accept that we can now only supply less food for ourselves and for our families? How do you think? Please, again, leave me a comment beneath this video. Do you think we're being classically conditioned into deprivation and accepting it as a reality? How do you feel? What's also really interesting is the future of retail. Now, a lot of places I've been to recently have had their shops shut down. Many have gone bankrupt and many are in the process of going bankrupt, while others are just trying to sit it out and once everything calms down, they plan on recruiting or rehiring their employee employees to come back to work. But by the time that happens, it could be too late. So <clears throat> what's been going on in the retail sector? There's been more and more businesses refusing to accept cash as they deem cash as dirty and they don't want to touch it in case they get infected, which brings us to our tap and go cards. You make a purchase, tap, no human contact, no human interaction physically, and you make your buy and you leave. This sounds like we're headed more and more towards a cashless society, and rightfully so. We will jump into a cashless society the longer this or these restrictions last. What does this mean? It's actually a positive for crypto, positive for Bitcoin, as we don't use physical coins. To make transact but again it's very very interesting to see what's going to happen to the future of the retail sector what i believe in my unprofessional and irrelevant opinion is many businesses won't reopen if this goes on long enough the damage will be too great and there'll be a lot of vacancies for stores a lot of rental vacancies for stores and it will in turn to encourage people or businesses to rent a space the prices of rent will drop hugely out of desperation because you've got to remember many of the businesses now if they haven't shut down already they're shutting down once they've shut down they're not going to be back they've cut their losses and that's it so what the future lies for these business rental properties is they're going to be relying on people being encouraged to start their own new businesses to look for a place to rent so they can conduct their business daily. So I'm expecting huge, huge, huge dips in business leases. On that same note, the online markets will be absolutely thriving, absolutely thriving. Those people who were already in the online business before this shit happened, very lucky, right time, right place. And these guys and girls are probably making a lot of money right now a lot of money and right so that's my two cents for today or tonight depending on which part of the world you're in i apologize for not bringing you more crypto news but unfortunately it is dead boring in the crypto world as many of you may know i am the chief 
Operating Officer for Nova Swan, and even we have announcements to make public, but there's no point. It's just not the right time to make them. So if your favorite crypto coins and brands have gone quiet and you think they've gone broke or they're panicking because of Corona, it's probably not the case. They've probably got some updates and news they want to release. Now's just not the time. People don't care. What people care about right now is the world's most valuable asset and it's this thing, toilet paper. People are searching for toilet paper. People are looking up news on coronavirus. People are looking up conspiracy theories while Bitcoin goes like this, up and down, up and down, up and down. People don't give a fuck anymore. It just, eh. Normally, people see Bitcoin drop 10, 15% in one day and it's, oh my God, panic mode. You see it everywhere. Now, no one's flinching. Bitcoin going up 10, 15% in a day. Everyone's excited, fear of missing out, create the FOMO, yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, no one's flinching. No one gives a fuck. Everybody's turned away from crypto news and they're all focused on this one thing which is becoming a bit of an obsession amongst most people and that's coronavirus, the world's most perfect viral nanoparticle that's too heavy to be airborne, won't fly further than one and a half to two meters at max if you cough or sneeze it out. The way you get infected apparently is it, if it touches your skin, it sticks to your skin. You touch your mouth or your eyes, bang, you're infected. If you just touch it with your hands and you don't touch your face, you're not infected yet. Soap does the trick. Coronavirus has a fatty bilayer. You soap, the soap breaks down the fatty bilayer, melts it away, and the insides of the virus collapse and die away. What's inside the virus? It's many other viruses. That's what makes it the coronavirus. That's how you distinguish one virus to another, it's insides. The coronavirus is a combination of various viruses. The scariest thing comes to mutating. Why I say that, how can it mutate? Why would it mutate? How do I know this? I'm not a doctor. Well, do some research, you put two and two together, you'll understand. Imagine if someone has a flu virus, for example, and they come into contact with someone that has the coronavirus, for example. And then that person with the flu virus also contracts the coronavirus. Now, this person is now a carrier of two viruses. And when these two viruses meet, they merge into one and mutate into something more powerful, something more stronger, something more unseen. This is what mutation means in the virus terms. So please, everybody, stay safe. The masks don't really do shit. I've said this before. It's just there to protect you from someone coughing and spitting on you, and it goes in your mouth. That's it. The most important thing is gloves. Please wear gloves. Go shopping, trolley, wear gloves before you touch anything. Speaking of which, oh, I've got a story to tell you guys. <laughs> a few days ago, I went to the supermarket, and as I was walking down the aisle, I saw this little old lady about head job height. She was trying to reach up to get some milk off the shelf and she couldn't reach so I felt bad. I thought, you know what, I'll do I'll do a, a good deed. I'll do the right thing and help her out. I'll, I'll grab the milk for her. So I asked her, do you need a hand? And she says, oh no, I'm okay. She's going, yeah, yeah, trying to reach this milk. I said, how many do you want? She replies, one please. I grab her the milk, I pass it to her, did my good deed. She then says, thank you and God bless you. I said, no problem. As I turn around, as I'm about to turn around, she then starts. The reason why we have the coronavirus is because we humans killed Jesus Christ over 2000 years ago. And as she's talking, she started preaching the good word of the Lord. Her eyes started to roll back in the back of her head. I'm thinking people are losing their shit now. This coronavirus is traumatizing people. That everyone's losing the plot. So she kept going, and she's going, and Jesus Christ and the rapture is coming and the apocalypse is near, and we must all praise the good Lord Savior, Jesus Christ, he's destroying the earth because we're bad human people. And I'm thinking, she was there, and she kept going for about two minutes, I'm trying to escape. Then I asked, I said, bitch, are you all right? And she said, excuse me, and she went to slap me, I grabbed her wrist in mid-flight, 
threw my toilet paper from my trolley into her trolley, caught security while holding onto her wrist and told them she just stole my pack of toilet paper, put it in her trolley and security kindly escorted her out the supermarket. The end. So seriously, people are losing their shit. Everyone calm down, be alert, but not alarmed. Be safe, be healthy, but don't take risks, okay? I need you guys to be safe and healthy so you keep coming back and watching because without you, this channel is nothing. And on that note, please subscribe, like, share, and retweet this episode if you haven't already done so. That just about wraps up Crypto Tonight tonight. My name is Darko bringing you my unprofessional and irrelevant opinion this evening. I look forward to catching up with you sometime next week, probably early next week. And until then, as always, rock on now!